Um, I call uh, Sarah Dowie. Oh, look, thank you, Mr Chair, and I join in the ranks of um, surprise to take another call um, in this the um, debate for on the title clauses one, two and three, and um, I never thought that I would, of course, take orders from Mr Matt Ducey, but um, so he is, he is the whip, and um, we will continue. Um, to make contributions on this bill, which, as my colleague has said, um, is a fine bill, is um, a small but very technical bill. And, um, of course, as the title, it's been slightly amended, now reads, Films, Videos and Publications Classification board, Interim Restriction Orders Amendment Act. Um, so, look, I think a very apt um, amendment to make to better reflect um, exactly the, the substance um, behind this bill. Again, one that increases um, the means and the flexibility that the classification team and the president um, has and the court um, to be able to make interim orders um, where they once were not able to. And, of course, this um, transpires from... Um, Chris Bishop, the member in charge, thinking about the consequences um, from the publication into the river, where the president was only left with um, two options when an appeal occurred before this um, this bill um, was was thought about, of course, and if it goes into force, um, will it give um, the team more flexibility? But there was only two options that the president had, and that was to completely um, ban the publication or to revert back um, to the original um, classification, either, or there was two of them prior to that, either um, res, uh, mature audiences or um, R14. So, um, as we've discussed before, um, this extends the, the toolbook box available um, to, to the President and, and the High Court, um, creating um, different criteria for consideration in the interim. And I've talked um, previously when I was um, making a contribution in part one about this idea that, um, with clause four, that um, allows a specified persons or classes of persons to be considered. And I think this is um, a really um, good thing when it comes to education that um, it allows the president to consider what's going on um, to balance the need for freedom of speech versus protections of society. And if a tertiary education or a high school or a certain group um, have already begun studying um, a publication and are in the depths of it, um, it may well ring true that the President or the High Court thinks it's appropriate to al allow them to finish that study, um, that it's not in the best interests while the more substantive consideration is going on um, after the initial appeal um, to pull that book or that publication away from them. So, um, you know, I think that's a, it's a really um, great thing to allow that flexibility um, moving forward. And this is exactly what um, this bill, um, little but effective, does. And, of course, the other um, part of, of the flexibility is with respect to allowing um, the age consideration um, movement, that, that the president um, in issuing um, an interim order doesn't have to revert back to the prior orders in that case. So they can make a judgment call as to have they got it right necessarily, um, notwithstanding that more substantive consideration will go on as the evidence is um, presented. But it allows, again, that flexibility to balance um, freedom of speech with respect to that public good. And I think that that, that more flexible system is um, more responsive and um, more suitable to our way of life here in New Zealand um, moving forward. And so um, I commend Chris Bishop, the member in charge, for bringing this bill. Um, I again reiterate that it is a small but technical and effective bill. Mr Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, call, uh, John Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, actually, when I was looking at this...